This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Shelby County Commissioner Steve Baser, tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Bill Drees, senior reporter for the Memphis Daily News. Welcome to Behind the Headlines. I'm in for Eric Barnes this week. Tonight on our program, we have Shelby County Commissioner Steve Baser. And a bit of a change of plans as well. Uh, this was originally going to be a discussion among several county commissioners about a number of issues that are facing the commission and, and facing Shelby County as a whole. Uh, unfortunately, some of our guests have not been able to be with us. We hope to reschedule that program at a later date, but we're still going to discuss those issues and we're going to discuss them with Commissioner Baser. So Commissioner Baser, let's talk about the most timely issue at this point, and that is the vote by the Shelby County Commission on Monday on the fairgrounds project that Memphis Mayor A.C. Wharton and his administration have been pursuing uh, since he came into office, really, in 2009, a project that goes back to the Harrington administration. Right. Um, it's, it's more complex than just an up or down vote on the fairgrounds. It's a vote on the tourism development zone and the county giving its blessings to it. You have had some, some very definite concerns and a lot of questions about the fairgrounds project. So going into this vote by the commission on Monday, where are you on the city's vision of the project and the inner workings, the financing of it at this point? Well, Bill, uh, you know, I've been looking at this for a couple of years now, and it, it's better today, at least for me, than it was a couple of months ago because I, I've seen more people getting involved, and that's been one of my criticisms is that there hasn't been much community involvement. So now we've actually seen Kevin Kane from the Convention and Visitors Bureau come down to the County Commission. And we've actually seen Bob Loeb and Charlie Ryan, you know, developers in the Midtown area coming down and showing their support for it. So it's more encouraging now than it was a couple of months ago because I've seen more people getting involved. I think there's still an awful lot of questions, um, you know, at least as far as who's going to be involved from a public, from a private perspective and what kind of partnerships are there going to be in terms of if there's going to be retail, who's going to be doing the retail, who's going to be running it. What's that going to look like? Is it going to be an outlet mall? Is it going to be a big box retailer? Is it going to be high end kind of outlet mall type of a thing? There's so many different things that are, that are out there. Um, and I've made some contacts with people and I'm going to put them in touch with Robert Lipscomb as well in terms of um, somebody approached me and, and has done high end outlet mall like um, you know Coach and Gucci mm -hmm. and, and Polo and that might work there. And this guy's got contacts in order to do that. And so, you know, that, that would be encouraging, again, if we had somebody who's done things in the past to step forward and say, I've done this concept at these other locations, and it works, and this is what we're going to do at the fairgrounds, and, and this is my commitment to make this happen. And, you know, so we've got some private money on top of the public money and something more than just a number on a piece of the, you know, a number on the paper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the educational funding is, is a key concern of the county commission because we fund education. Right, and, 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 and let, let, let me explain a bit for, for, for the listeners. What, what you're actually voting on Monday is a contract with the city where the city guarantees that the county essentially will not lose any of the sales tax revenue that it gets that goes to fund public education Correct. here. Because the, the, the financing for a fairgrounds renovation would come from sales tax revenue growth that is recaptured through a tourism development zone. Yes. So, so back, back to this contract with the city, your, your concerns about the education funding and whether it preserves that. Right. Well, roughly 12.5% uh, of the dollars that, that are going to be captured for this project would have gone to education. And so we estimate that's $1 to $2 million a year over the life of the project, which is 30 years. So that's a pretty significant amount of money. And what we want to do is make sure that, um, that there's, the city will somehow make us good on that money because the mechanism of the TDZ zone as it is, 
um, you know, has all that sales tax dollars going in to the TDZ zone to pay off the bonds. And so we need some assurance from the city that, that we're going to be made whole on the educational component of that. Mm -hmm. Um, your, your colleague on the commission, David Reeves, had proposed before that, that the um, county commission not give its blessings for a change in basic education program education funding until or unless the city of Memphis reached some kind of payment plan agreement with Shelby County Schools. This is over the $57 million that uh, the school system won in a court judgment, mm -hmm. which is still pending because the city has a counterclaim. With, with, with that as background, um, from your seat on the, on the commission, do you think that there will be an attempt on Monday to again tie that $57 million, this time to the county giving its blessings to the, uh, to the fairgrounds project? Well, um, I would say, Bill, there's 100% certainty that that that'll be brought up by Commissioner Reeves. Uh, whether or not there's an extra language to go with the, uh, the resolution that we have to specify that that needs to happen, I'm not sure if he's going to have that. I'm not sure if he did have it, if it would get added on successfully. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably certain that the votes are there to pass the, the resolution as it stands. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, although there are commissioners that have questions, and I'm, I'm one of them. And I don't know, again, why there's such a rush to get it done. There's a little bit of a concern from, from the mayor's office from, and Mayor Wharton's office and Robert Lipscomb that um, perhaps the, the, the state government will try to close the door on TDZ zones. And if, if there were any kind of legislation that might come out in January or February, and that's one of the reasons why there's kind of a rush to get this done. Um, I don't see that on their agenda. I don't see that happening. So I mean, I'm not really convinced that there's an urgency to get this passed right away. Um, you know, but that being said, I'm one of 13 votes. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I can express my opinion, which I will, and uh, let's see if I can persuade enough folks to, to say let's, let's hold off until we get some of these questions answered. Right. So, so it, it, from your vantage point, it would probably be a delay to get more answers as opposed to just flat out saying no to the city at this point. Correct. I mean, I, th I think that the TDZ zone is a great source of funding. Um, I would feel better about the project if, again, as we've discussed, if, if I had more knowledge of what it was they're going to do. And specifically, if we're going after the youth athletic market, how does <clears throat> development at the fairgrounds support the community's effort and as a region, our efforts to get that youth athletic market? Um, who's going to be in charge of developing the fairgrounds? And who's going to do the different pieces? Is it, you know, if you look at the footprint, it's, it's really not that big. I mean, if you look at a micro soccer complex, you couldn't put micro soccer complex inside the fairgrounds property. Mm -hmm. It's not big enough. So, you know, when we say we're going to go after youth athletics, I think we need to be more specific about are we going after the cheerleader market and we're going to put in a, a building that can do you know, cheerleading indoors and, and so the people can come to Memphis and then how does that look versus what's available around us in a, in a region. And, you know, I think we need to be very thoughtful and deliberate about what it is we're trying to do. Right now, I think we've kind of got a laundry list of things that we want to do and a lot of promises have been made and I'd feel better about it if we had more certainty of what the plan is and who's going to be doing what up front. You even have have a uh, marketing approach to this. You think you yeah. think we ought we ought to drop the name Mid South Fairgrounds. I, I think uh, I think if if we rename this project Tiger Town, I think that'll get a lot of traction. I think um, you know you've got Tiger Lane, and as you pointed out, the teams that play in the Heritage Classic, they're both Tigers as their mm -hmm. mascots, um, and I and I think that sounds better. I mean, the fairgrounds has been gone for a number of years now, and it's not going back. So why we want to keep calling this the fairgrounds? I'm not really sure. It, I think if we said we're going to call this Tiger Town, we're going to do things with the University of Memphis, and we're going to you know, work on that, I think it's got a little bit of a more catchy ring to it. It's got something I think more people can get behind. Um, but then that's just my opinion. Okay. And, and I think we'll be hearing a lot more about this regardless of what the outcome is. There are still many more developments to come 
on the on the whole fairgrounds project Absolutely. and and the bid to remake this key parcel of uh, Midtown real estate mm -hmm. as it is. Um, let's let's talk about life on the county commission because you had you were one of the seven returning members in the August uh, county general elections. Yes. Uh, in a busy election year here. Uh, the county commission has six new members. Your new four-year term of office began on September 1. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there have, have been some, I'll call them adjustments. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> it, if you look at group dynamics, and, mm -hmm. you know, I've been in, involved with corporate America my whole life, and you, you form groups, and there's usually a little bit of a phase up front when people are kind of feeling each other out, and, and I call it kind of the... You know, you have the forming, and then you have the storming, and then we have norming and performing. And so I think right now we're, we're starting to move into that performing phase. So there was a little bit of feeling each other out and, and seeing kind of, you know, what, what the different groupings are. Um, and I think you've seen some changes recently. And, you know, I think the media has done a good job of, of highlighting some of the dissension. But what you don't see is that we're, you know, we've, we've talked about public safety, and we've had a couple of different... You know, I've had Amy Weirich down there, and we've had the sheriff, and we've had the police director, and, you know, we've had thoughtful discussions about public safety, and we've had thoughtful discussions about economic development. We've had the Convention and Visitors Bureau and Downtown Memphis Commission, the Chamber of Commerce have all made presentations. We had a, a all-day retreat to get even more background. And so, you know, I'm very encouraged about the group. Um, there, there's, you know, everyone on the commission is very thoughtful. I think they really take their jobs seriously, and I'm looking forward to the things that we're going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And and in the life of, of anybody, the, it, it, this goes for the city council too. I think I think what people who aren't, don't get paid like, as I do to be there for the meetings and to watch them happen. I think what's missed is that there are many many more votes where there is some discussion or next to no discussion, and the body votes unanimously. And mm -hmm. that's the story of most resolutions and most ordinances that, that come before the county commission or before the city council. Um, uh, uh, in, in my line of work, however, that's not what makes news. Um, right. And, and, and uh, uh, th there's also a learning curve when a body begins their new term of office, especially with six new commissioners on a body of 13. They, they, people don't come on to the commission, no matter how well informed they might be, knowing how things work, because it's a pretty complex structure, this mm -hmm. county government is. And you've been on the body since 2011? 20, 2012. 2012. 2012. So you've got a whole two years. I've got two on years. The body. Right. Two years. <laughs> Feels like longer than that. But, mm -hmm. and, and I've learned a lot. And I, you know, I, my first meetings, it took me a while where I, I would just sit back and kind of listen and, and, and not say much. And even today, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I think we sometimes say things to say things. And so, you know, I, if I'm going to speak at the meeting, I usually try to, to say something significant or at least make a very valid point. Um, and I think more, you know, more of the body is doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that's good. Um, but yeah, it has been learning. It is very intricate. And, you know, talking recently about TDZ zones and the TIF districts and, and making sure that everybody understands that the TDZ zone is sales tax dollars, the TIF zone is for property tax increases, and how the differences are and making sure that people understand the funding for education and, and what part of the funding of the education comes out of sales taxes and what part of the funding of education comes out of property taxes. And so there's been education on a lot of those issues mm -hmm. up front and and everybody's really I think for the most part everybody gets it pretty quickly they're all quick studies um, and I'm, again I'm very very pleased with the body that we have. That's at least several pie charts right right there if if nothing else in explaining how those how those particular in, in incentives work. Exactly. Um, so when when there was this this uh, storming as you referred to it. Uh, you were among the seven commissioners who joined a lawsuit against Chairman Justin Ford 
over him not including an item that you sponsored and the Commissioner Walter Bailey had, had sponsored mm -hmm. at, at different points uh, very early in the term of office, the meetings in September, to, to, to be specific. Right. That lawsuit has now been dropped. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you worked out the differences on that particular point? On that, no, I don't think we have worked out our differences on that particular point. Um, it hasn't gone to vote yet, mm -hmm. and it actually got moved to, got referred to a special committee from the committee on Wednesday. So it, it won't actually reach the full commission for a vote anytime soon. Um, but, you know, I, I think that was really, it was more of a, a representation of some of that storming that was going on. And I, I think we're putting that behind us. And we're trying to move forward. And I'm, you know, I'm pleased with where we're at. I think there was just some issues with, uh, again, the group dynamics and the chairman, and, and making sure that the chair knew, um, you know, that at least in the opinion of the majority, that he couldn't just arbitrarily, you know, not allow things on the agenda. Okay. And and at at this point, we're going to engage in some inside baseball, really inside, inside baseball. baseball here, because what was proposed was a rule change to add items to the commission's agenda. Currently, that requires nine votes, a super majority or a two-thirds majority of the body. The rule change of the, of the commission's rules that you all proposed was to make that a simple majority. Mm -hmm. With seven votes, you can add an item to the agenda. Right. Um, there was some suspicion on Chairman Ford's part and some of the folks who voted for him as chairman, that this was perhaps an attempt to elect a new chairman. Was it? No, it was not. Okay. Was and not. you voted for chairman Ford. I did vote for to, chairman Ford. To be Ford. chairman in, in the initial vote. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So putting yourself in their place, why do you think they, they feel that way? You know, I, I, I've, I can't really say that I've spent a lot of time talking to them about that particular issue. So. I don't want to try to put myself in their place. Okay. You know, I, I would just say, you know, we, we had our issues. Um, we've put them behind us, and we're trying to move forward in the best way possible. Okay. And we'll, we'll see what happens with that. The, the part of the agreement for dropping the lawsuit was that this would be on the committee's, uh, on the commission's committee meetings list this past Wednesday, and it was, and I believe it's been referred to an ad hoc committee that's looking yes. at all of the rules in general, which is going to take more time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how that, how that we'll progresses. see how that progresses. <laughs> As you mentioned, the county commission got involved in uh, much of the discussion about whether our crime situation is out of control, whether it, how it can be brought back into control if it's out of control various concerns about the crime issue, mm -hmm. uh, which in the past has mostly been a, a city hall discussion. This was a little bit different. Why is the county commission involved in this, other than the fact that the county commission districts cover the city of Memphis as well as the county outside of the city? Right. Well, I think, you know, um, as leaders in the community, we're, we're trying to advance some specific things. We're, we want to see better education. And we want to see more economic development, better jobs, and more opportunities for people. And public safety is another one of those key three pillars, if you will. And so, you know, what, I mean, for Shelby County to prosper, you know, we need everybody to feel safe. We need safe communities. And so it's, it's not an issue, you know, for just the suburban people or just the urban people. It's an issue for the whole county. And, you know, if you look at the city of Memphis, we've, we've seen... The CMF is growing in size and decrease in population. And why are people leaving? Well, a lot of people are leaving because they don't feel safe. And, and that's just the reality of it. So we can make the community feel safer. Then people want to stay in Memphis. People want to move to Memphis. It'll help our image throughout the country. And, you know, so it's, it's one of the most important things that we have on our plate right now. Does... Um does the Shelby County Sheriff get enlisted to do more 
than his office is already doing because the sheriff's office is involved in, in law enforcement within the city to some extent. Do you think the sheriff gets more involved in that? You know, I've, I've seen a great spirit of collaboration between the sheriff and the and Memphis Police Department. And so, um, you know, th we've had them before us and they've talked about how they're working together to fight gang crime and they have special operations and they work together on, on a lot of things. So I think the spirit of cooperation is very high and I think that's really helping us. You know, I think we need to give them more resources and, you know, we need to be more thoughtful and deliberate about what we do. But I think we're, we're doing things in the right direction and I think that's where we want to just make sure we're doing the right things and we're maximizing the use of our resources. Right. And an early test of that was the school's demerger when uh, when the county commission w w was really focused on what happens in terms of resource officers, police officers, sheriff's deputies, and schools, because that did not go as well as I think it had been hoped I in the beginning. You talking about when uh, when it merged? When in in, in the merger, yeah, right? I think when it all merged together, yeah, there was some rough spots. Um, but then again, you know, in in my you know, career here in Memphis on the business side, I was with Sharing Plow, and then we got bought by Merck, and now Merck sold us to Bear. And there's always, you know, learning curve. And, and when a big organization takes over another organization, things don't go seamless. You know, you do the best you can, and you work through the problems. And I think we did that. Okay, sticking to education as as we move into the final part of our discussion here. Um, the county commission has 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 one one school year one complete school year under its belt in terms of being the sole local funding source for public education in the in the one and only year of the merger. Right. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated with the demerger because the county commission is still the sole funder of schools in Shelby County Schools. Um, the sole local funder. Mm -hmm. It's also a partial funder along with each of the suburban governments of the six suburban school systems we have. Um, and and that, that got worked out in the work, most recent uh, uh, budget deliberations this past spring. Mm -hmm. um, what's it going to be like this spring? Do you have a model in place for how this works in the demerger when you start doing this again in the spring? Um. In terms of the, I would say not right now, mm -hmm. and we're working on that. I'll just say that. Um, you know, I think one of the big things that I can talk to is the whole capital spending piece, and I know there there are thoughts on on the capital spending and do you allocate the capital along with the students, much like you would do allocating the funds, you know, for the the students themselves, and right. so on average. On average daily on attendance. On average daily attendance. And right. so, do we do that? And and I think um, there there you know there's a faction on the commission that and I, I would put myself in that camp right now and, and I'll say it on the record that would say you know municipalities have their own funding mechanisms. So I don't know that it's fair to say I'm going to allocate capital along those same lines because you know Germantown has their funding mechanism now. Collierville, Bartlett, but at the same time, you know, we, we don't want to not fund the municipalities either. So that we're going to have to find some balance there. And I think the other thing is we want to make sure that we're very purposeful in what we do and not just blindly give money to the schools, you know, capital money for them to do as they will. I think we're doing some facility studies now and we should be prioritizing our spending based on need and based on our goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. So if it turns out, you know, for example, that Bartlett needs something, a new roof or whatever, and, and it's disproportionate to the number of students they have, but the need is there, you know, then that may be something we fund. Um, at the same time, if, if there's more capital needed in the city schools because they're older and, you know, there's more of them, then maybe we need to do that. So that's just something I think that'll work its way out through the budget process. And I think that's where there's going to be probably more discussion than, than other things. Do you need to bring back the needs assessment committee? And again, more inside baseball. The needs assessment committee was a group of citizens who basically looked at the capital needs of the Memphis City School System and Shelby County School System together 
uh, when we had two school systems. Does mm -hmm. that need to come back? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I would say mm -hmm. possibly, but I, I'm not really sure about that. And, and there are a number of plans. We should also point out Lakeland is, is of course, pursuing uh, a, a combined middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Collierville is studying the need for uh, some kind of comprehensive high school and its plans uh, going forward in the future. And it takes a few years to get any capital project on the boards and to come to the county commission or to the mayor and board of aldermen in a, in a given city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that's done, okay, we need this, we don't really have a plan. That takes time, obviously. Right. So you all have some plan and uh, some, some room in the budget cycle to work through these things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, uh, going into the, uh, the uh, new year, um, just a quick wrap up on, on taxes. Uh, will anybody be proposing a property tax hike at the county level? I hope not. <laughs> I really, I mean, we need lower taxes. And if you look at, you know, one of the reasons why we're having to do pilots and we're having to do TDZs on, you know, in, in TIF districts is because our taxes are so high. And that's one of the things that makes us uncompetitive relative to some of the surrounding area. All right. We'll leave it right there. We've reached the end of the show. County Commissioner Steve so Fazer, thank you very much for being with us. Eric Barnes will be back next time. I'm Bill Drees. Thank you for watching Behind the Headlines.